Hello, everybody. Um, all right, we're going to continue with our game. I'm back to my hippo getting the grass. Um, I accidentally used the wrong game last time I made a video with the plums and the wombats. That was Williams. So, William, uh, thank you for that. Um, but I'll go back to using my own stuff. Okay, um, I challenged you guys to do a bunch of things, and it seems like uh, some good stuff was done. I had some emails saying that uh, people were on the right track, so I'll trust you and say that's great. Um, now, what we want is we want the hippo to run around and eat the grass. So you can see he's eating the grass. Now, I gave you a bit of a uh, hint on how to do that. I'm hoping that maybe some of you figured it out on your own, but if you didn't, here we go. So this is my hippo code, and what I want you to note is right here. So this is how I determine whether or not my hippo has hit something. Now, in computers, what's so this is something that we never ever think about is that things are constantly being checked for. What I mean is, like right now, you're watching me on your computer monitor or your phone or whatever, and your computer is waiting for input. There's something in your computer that's running and just constantly checking to see if somebody has hit a key or pressed a mouse button or stuff like that. So they're constantly looping and looking for things. And so that's what's happening here. This is the hippo. And this act method, the fact that we've put code in the act method means that this code is going to run over and over and over and over and over again. And even if I'm not pressing anything, it's still running and saying, hey, did someone hit the right button? No, okay, okay, did someone hit it now? No, it's like paranoid, you know, it keeps checking to see did somebody press something. And until somebody actually presses something, nothing is going to happen, but it's constantly checking. And so one of the other things we're checking for, other than our key control, now we're saying this line here says, I wonder if our hippo hit any of the grass objects that are on the screen. So that's kind of human speak for what you see here. Now computer wise it's saying did the hippo intersect with any of the grass class objects. And so that's what you see. We're going to get an intercepting intersecting object look for the hippo hitting the grass. Don't forget we're in the hippo code right now and so it's the hippo that is looking to see if it intersects with the grass. Now, if it does intersect with the grass, we save that grass object, because remember, there are multiple grass objects on the screen. We save it as G, okay? And if G, and this is a double negative, but if G is not null, meaning that if G is actually something, if we actually hit something, we want to remove it from the world, okay? So again, this says, did we hit a grass object? If we did, we save it as G. If G is not null, meaning if we actually hit something, because if we didn't hit anything, G is going to be what we call null. It's going to be nothing. We didn't hit anything. But if it's not null, that means we hit something, and so we remove it from the screen. Okay? So if you add that code to your hero, whether it be a hippo or a wombat or whatever, um, you should be able to remove whatever enemy or collecting item you have in your world. So try that if you didn't get it working already. Now where we want to go next is I would like to keep track of how many of these things I've collected. Now Greenfoot makes it nice and easy for us to do that because they provide to us some pre-made classes. So if I go up here and I go to edit and then import class I see that they have a bunch of things here, and we, we're, we're going to probably use a few of them, but one of them I want to use today is called counter. And if you read here, it says a counter class allows you to display a numerical value on the screen. Okay, that sounds like what I want to do. Fantastic. And it gives me some documentation if I want to continue reading through. Now, for you guys, I'm not sure this is going to mean a ton because we're fairly new at this, but just be aware that there is documentation on all the stuff we want to use, so when we get a little more used to it, you want to do something more advanced or relearn something, and it's going to be there. So I'm going to click import. Now what I want you to watch is watch what happens over here to the class diagram. Okay, there's counter. Now counter doesn't appear on the screen automatically because I haven't told it to yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my world, and I'm going to tell the counter to appear on the screen. So I'm going to say add 
object, and I'm going to put new counter, and I want to put the counter in, the, let's say, the top left corner of the screen. It doesn't matter, it's put it in the top right, but we'll put it in the top left, so I'll just move it over 50 and maybe down uh, 20 or something like that, and we'll see what that looks like. Okay, that looks pretty good. That's where I want it. Now, yeah, I can see that there's a grass object on top of it. Not a big deal. Maybe later we're going to learn how to get things to appear um, far away from each other, as a couple of people have already emailed me about doing that, which is great. But you can see the counter just stays there because it's not randomized. It's always going to appear in that one spot. And notice when I put that in my code, I did not put it in the for loop. I don't want five counters. I only want one. Okay. Okay. So we've got a counter, we got a hippo, we got grass. Now we need to figure out how are we going to make it such that when we pick up a grass object, when the hippo picks up a grass object, it's going to increase the counter. Well, now we run into a little bit of a problem where the counter is in my world. Like I declare the counter in my world, but when the hippo detects the grass, it's in a different area, it's in the hippo class. So how do I get this file, this class, to collaborate with this class? And it's not quite as hard as you think it might be. The only thing is, we can't just put new counter right there. Because what's going to happen is we'll put a brand new counter on the screen, but then we have no way to refer to it when we go to the hippo area. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go up to the top here, and we are going to make a public static variable. So I'll just type it and I'll explain. Okay, this line here is me creating a new counter, and I'm giving it a name, my count. And that's the key. I'm giving it a name. So instead of putting new counter here, I'm going to take my count, and I'm going to paste. So now, I actually haven't changed anything. If you watch here, look, I still have the counter appearing on the screen. It's just that now I've given it a name. When a baby is born, we don't just call it baby. We give it an actual name so we can refer to it in the future, right? It's the same thing. Right here, when I create a counter, I'm saying I'm going to name my counter my count. And I want to put my count at 5020 on the screen. Okay? Okay, now, where that's going to come in handy is when I go to the hippo. And here in the hippo is where I want to increase my count. Because down here, this is where I've detected that I've found a grass object and I'm going to remove it. So in here, I want to add some code that's going to increase the value of the counter. So what students are often tempted to do is in here they say, okay, well, my count uh, plus plus. It doesn't quite work that way. It's a little bit different than maybe what you're used to from previous Java programs. A couple things here. My count is a counter. It's not an int. And so I can't just go plus plus because it doesn't know what that means. The other thing is that notice it says cannot find symbol variable my count. That's because if I type my count like that, it starts looking for it in this hippo class and it ain't here. Where is it? It's in my world. So what I have to do is just type my world in front with a dot like that. And now it's able to find it. So it won't say can't find it anymore. Now it just says something's wrong with these. Can't do that. And because my count is a counter object, if I look in here, you'll see that a counter has some things I can do with it. For example, if I look down here, I don't want to ever change this, by the way. This code is made for me by Greenfoot. I can use it, but I don't want to change it. And notice there's an add function. There's an add method I can use with counter. I'm going to close that back down. I was just showing you that because what I want to do is go, okay, my world dot my count dot add, and I'm going to add one like that. So now, with any luck, if I run this, one, two, three, four, five. Fantastic. So now I have a game with a counter and I can keep score. Now that's great, but look what happens when I hit reset. 
I'm still at five, and that's probably not what I want. So the one last thing that you want to add is you want to go to my world, and every time a new world is created, I want to reset the counter. So I would say in here, my count dot set value to zero. And what that's going to do is every time we reset the world, so I'll run around here, get some, here we go. But if I reset, it takes it back to zero. Okay. And there we go. So I got some fun hippo grass eating video game stuff going on here. Um, so try to add that to your game. And the challenge I'll give you, if you want to continue and try to move on, and I've had some good feedback. I think people are generally enjoying this and uh, want to continue making a cool video game. I would like to challenge you to try to make it so that when you hit five, um, let's see if you can move to a new world. So what that would mean is you would have to make another world and you would maybe make the hippo or make your hero go to another world. So think about any game you've ever played, Mario, Donkey Kong, um, those games where you complete one board and you, you move to another world. So you may have to go up here and look at, okay, well, how do I make a new world? How do I move to it? And so that'll be your challenge. Use the Greenfoot website. Use the Greenfoot tutorials. There's lots of really good stuff online. Um, and if that fails and you, you want to email me and ask, then I can give you a little bit of guidance. Okay? But what I'd like everyone to do is make sure that you can get the counter working, make sure that you're, you're uh, intersecting with your collection item. And I think tomorrow we will go to that new world and maybe even add an enemy. Okay? Good luck, everybody.